President and CEO of the Newark Trust for Education. We're an independent nonprofit uh, here in Newark uh, committed to ensuring that every one of our young people gets a quality public school education. This is our third annual uh, school advisory board forum. Uh, we're proud to say it's being held in our community space this year. We're joined by six candidates uh, of eight who are running for three seats. Uh, on the advisory board. I would, before we begin, I'd just like to thank all of you in the audience for uh, coming. I'd like to thank our staff for all of the support that they put into uh, preparing for this evening. Each of the candidates has been given an issues brief that we prepare annually. Copies are available over on the side table if you'd like to take one with you. You can find it on our website as well. And the issue brief basically uh, explains several of the big issues uh, around education, funding formulas, school choice, in a way that doesn't take sides. We try to scrub them as best as we can of any adjectives like this is good or this is bad, but simply say, here's the facts as we know them. You know, maybe this could help inform the conversation. It's part of what we, we try to do. You can never, I think no matter how hard you try to do that, sometimes even the facts you choose to spotlight say something about um, you know, a, a particular point of view. Our program tonight focuses on the candidates. They'll all have an opportunity to introduce themselves to you. I have four questions that we're going to ask of each candidate, and then our staff will be passing around uh, index cards uh, 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 for your questions that we're going to leave plenty of time for towards the end of the program. We're going to keep it moving kind of quickly. Uh, please know that this will be streaming live, I'm not streaming live, this will be shown uh, and available on our website, on our <coughs> Facebook page, Newark Trust website, Newark Trust Facebook page, and we will also be showing this on local cable access and will be repeated in rotation uh, in the days leading up to the election on April 23rd. So with that, Let's just jump in. Uh, we have, uh, I'm going to mix things up. You know, I'll start from left to right sometimes, sometimes right to left, sometimes the middle out, just to kind of keep things going so that you don't always have to be thinking like the way I used to have to think in school, because, you know, if I was the, in the first row, fourth student, I count down the paragraphs. You know, that was mine. So we'll try to, we'll try to mix things up a little bit. But let's just begin by giving um, all of our candidates a round of applause. Thank you. Uh, we're glad you're here. Thank you so much. So let's start on, on this end. Everybody has two minutes. You'll get a signal when you, you get close to that time. If you could keep to that, that would be terrific. And we're just going to give you a chance to introduce yourself and tell all of us and here and those who are watching uh, who you are and why you're running School Advisory Board. So in the end. Um, <clears throat> good evening, everyone. Um, good evening. My name is Philip Selinger. I'm running for the School Advisory Board. I'm also a board member now. I'm 58 years old. Grew up in Newark. Um, was here 58 years. Uh, my wife went to uh, public schools. I went to public schools. My children went to public schools. My grandchildren are in public schools. So I have a very important stake in this city and in public schools. Um, I'm a district leader for 20 years. I'm a constable in Essex County. I also was a Jew working with the juvenile justice system. I work with, right now with the community relations department, Newark Fire Department. And I'm also um, a member of the, my own organization, the Phil Sounder Civic Association. And I'm here today to get your vote, knowing that I will do the job and that I will stay in touch with all the community people <coughs> and the teachers to get North's public schools back on the right track. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. And Crystal? Yes. Good evening, everyone. First, I would like to thank the Newark Trust for having us here this evening, taking out your time to put in this together. I really appreciate it. And I want to thank everyone here taking out of your personal time to be here and get to know us. 
Um, I am a homeowner for the East Warden here in the city of Newark. I have a huge family, so a bunch of us live here. I have a lot of kids always in my house, so it's always a fun house to be a part of. Um, I graduated for Saint, from St. Saint Peter's University with a degree in political science and social work, and I am also currently pursuing my master's degree in urban affairs and education. I was going to Hunter College in New York, but now I am transferring to Rutgers because they have a better education program, so I'm seeking that at this moment. Um, I am also, I work with a lot of youth from the ages of three years old to 14 years old as a part of my church. I mentor them, I prepare curricula for them, curriculum for them, and I also try to do activities with them that take them out of being in the streets to actually having a safe haven, kind of like a community center, a safe haven outside of the streets where they can come and get to become familiar with resources that are available to them for their further education and also to prepare them for the real world. Um, my goal to be a part of the Newark School Board is to bring back local control. There have been a lot of vacancies in this city and it's about time that a new face comes in and we're allowed to be a part of being, making sure that we are partnering with the parents and the children to make sure they get an effective education in this city. It's important for every child to get all the resources that they are entitled to so that they can have a better future. So my goal here is to seek your vote on April 23rd and I ask that you consider me to become a board member because I will stand here and I will fight for what's right for all the children in the city of Newark. I believe that children are the most important and effective tool in the community and if we allow them to get the best education they will become successful and it'll make the city of Newark a better place. Thank you. Ronnie Eugene Kellman. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Ronnie Eugene Kellum. Um, I've been in Newark for 14 years. I was born and raised in Dallas, Texas. Um, I am a recent graduate of 2011 from Michael McShabazz High School, uh, where I held class president for four terms. Um, I have been, I, I was voted uh, a part of my senior class executive committee. Uh, I was voted uh, a student representative for the whole school um, in 2011. Uh, I attend Essex County College majoring in political science, minoring in education. Um, and the reason why I'm running for the school advisory board is because I am a youth. And my, my goal is to have a voice for the youth because the youth doesn't have a voice. And if they do speak out, they are subject to consequences from the administration team. There's no, there's no time for that. So this is the reason why I want to run for the board. Um, I'm willing to uh, spend countless hours with the community, parents, uh, bring all stakeholders to the table so they can be at the table for decision making. We cannot allow uh, one person in this district to make decisions for 280,000 uh, residents in the city of Newark. We don't allow you know, uh, one person to make decisions for uh, 38,000 students in North public schools. You know, everyone needs to be at the table to make decisions. So this is the reason why I'm running for uh, School Advisory Board. And I wish to have your support on April 23rd, uh, line A8. Ms. Baskerville, our, our present chair of the Advisory Board. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ross. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for having us here this evening. My name is Antoinette Baskerville Richardson. I'm the president of the North Board of Education. I'm also a proud member of the Children First team. Our team is Phil Selinger, A2, Reginald Bledsoe, A4, and I'm Antoinette Baskerville Richardson, A5. I am a graduate of Peshawn Avenue School, Leap Wake High School, and I uh, taught in the district for over 30 years when I retired in uh, 2010. I then uh, ran for the school board and I was elected in 2011 and I've been the president of the board for two years. I'm running again, I'm running for re-election because I know that we are at a very crucial point in Newark in education. What is happening right now is that the history of public education is being written. I've done a lot of reading on the history of public education. There's not much being said about this era that we're going through right now because it's being written and what it will look like is up to us. Whether or not the people of Newark resist a plan that they have had no part in developing or whether or not, or whether those who develop the plan get their way and inflict a plan upon us that could make us end up like New Orleans with no visible, recognizable public school system. So I want to continue what I started and I think that I have been in the leadership of that and I want to continue to work with everyone. 
Reginald Bledscott. Thank so. you. Thank you, Willis. First, I would like to thank the Newark Trust for Education, uh, the members of the audience for attending. Uh, my name is Reginald Bledsoe. I am a proud member of the Children's First Team. I'm running with Mr. Selinger, A2, Ms. Baskerville Richardson, A5. Again, my name is Reginald Bledsoe. I am a proud graduate of Quitman Street School, a graduate of Morton Street School. I currently attend Montclair State University majoring in, majoring in political science with a minor in business. While at Montclair State, I was elected the first African-American student representative there. Also, I've been constantly been involved in the community. I'm a lifelong resident of the city. I'm a resident of High Park Gardens in the city of Newark in the Central Ward. I've been a district leader in the Central Ward, the youngest elected. Uh, I've also been a legislative aide to form, former freeholder president <coughs> Ronnie Watson. And I'm running because I believe in Newark. I believe in the city's children. I believe in traditional public schools. And I believe that we must continue the dialogue of returning local control and stop the controlling of our school system and the closing of our school system. Again, I ask that you vote for the Children's First Team, Mr. Selinger, A2, with myself, Reginald Bledsoe, A4, and Ms. Baskin Richardson, A5, on Wednesday, April 23rd. Thank, thank you thank very, very much. much. Thank you. And Donald Jackson. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the Milk Education Trust for allowing me to come out. My name is Donald G. Jackson, Jr., line A8. Um, like most, if not everybody on this uh, panel, I was born and raised in North New Jersey. Graduate of Mount Benchabaz High School, class of 2010. And um, ever since I can remember, I've been active in my community, anywhere from attending uh, school board meetings to attending council meetings to attending this meeting, that meeting, this function. Um, I've been very active in the city of Newark uh, for most of my young adult and adult life. Um, and I continue to be active to this day, um, and participating in nightly community patrols throughout the city of Newark. Um, uh, lately, we've been going around patrolling uh, neighborhood schools um, because, as we all know, there's been lately a problem with the uh, locking down of these schools. So those are just some of the activities that I do. The reason why I'm running for the uh, school board because um, after unsuccessfully running in 2011, I thought that it was time for me to again try to run. Um, as uh, another panel member stated, uh, we're at a critical time in our city, and uh, you need people who are willing to fight, who are well-versed on the issues, uh, who have a proven track record of uh, standing up for the community on your uh, board of education. We're talking about local control. You need responsible people on that board, and not anyone who's willing to say yes to anything. So um, I hope I have your vote. Uh, I look forward to everyone coming out. Please come out. The election is April 23rd, 2014. It's on a Wednesday. And again, I'm Donald Jackson, Donald G. Jackson Jr. in my line of day one. All right, thank you all very much. Uh, and thank you for your service so, and your commitment and willingness to serve. Many people will tell you that being a school board member is a thankless job. Uh, it takes lots of time and, uh, and energy, and, uh, just a rigorous discussion, often and for, for no pay. Uh, it's, it's also been said that School board members can either be single issue candidates or the type of person who is, is gonna make up his or her mind based on whatever's in front of them at the time. So I'm curious, is there a single issue driving any one of you? At, or if not, what are the big issues that you think you should be focused on? We'll start with Philip on the end Go on down this way, and then we'll switch it up. <clears throat> um, there's not one single issue in, in, in my mind. There's many of it. There's this universal program. There's the, um, with the children have to travel all over the city to go to different schools. There's also this, the, uh, the core um, where the teachers can't really teach the way they want. The children really don't get a lot of uh, um, know how like it used to be when when I grew up so and there's you know there's there's issues about safety there's issues about um, teachers and there's a big issue about our superintendent that she don't agree with us that she don't even come to the meetings so that's the number one issue if there was going to be a number one issue she don't even want to show up at a meeting I mean she's it's disrespectful to the board it's disrespectful to the community it's disrespectful to the teachers. Thank you. 
Hey, I believe that there isn't just one issue. There are many issues, as we all know. If you're here today, it's because you are aware of what's going on in this city. The main issue that I believe, um, one of the main issues is the school, the school closings. I'm in total disagreement with that. I don't understand how we're gonna make a successful city when we're trying to close down schools and we want our kids to be successful. Um, I'm in total disagreement with that and I believe that that's a major issue that I wanna fight for. I wanna make sure that schools are not shut down in this city. I also believe that there's issues with the, the core exams that they're trying to do that are standardized tests on the computers. How do they wanna give kids tests on the computers and there's not even enough computers in school or resources for kids to become familiar and well-trained of taking exams like this? I also believe that the superintendent has been neglect, has given the, the, the city of Newark a lot of neglect by not even attending meetings. She want, they're making decisions for the city of Newark, but they're not well aware of, this, of the issues in the city of Newark. And I believe that that's a big failure just in itself. I believe that there needs to be more after school programs. Kids need to have something to do after school. They need things to make them well-rounded. I also believe that there's an issue with teachers, even the maintenance staff, the nurses in the schools, be getting what they deserve. Not only what they're entitled to, but what they deserve because they're the ones investing the time in the schools. And if, the, if they, the people that are there working with the children, get what they're entitled to, then they're going to give the children the best. And I believe that that's something that has been put aside. And it's, it's time for all these things to change so that the kids can get what they deserve and they can become successful. I think that as I sit here today, our main focus together, um, whether everyone is running on a different ticket and I'm A6 or and they're A5, A8, whatever our numbers are, the main goal here is to make sure that every child in the city of Newark gets the best education because the education is their tool for success and we need to stand and address every single issue that the schools are facing right now. No more school closings. That is the main goal and think that, I, that I think we should um, focus on. Thank you very, very much. And Ronnie? Um, I believe there are many issues that are at hand. Uh, my biggest issue, my biggest issues are uh, two things. Uh, the school closings, I am totally uh, in, a, in disagreement with closing schools, relocating students, um, you know, uh, closing uh, public schools to house charter schools. I am in disagreement with uh, closing schools to house students into another school that are putting kids at a risk of not learning. Uh, my second issue is um, fighting for funding. Uh, we have a superintendent who has staff members that are making well over the above salary rate. Um, as a board member, I will challenge the district to bring back money into our school systems. Um, a, a lot of programs are being cut a lot of uh, money is being taken out of our system, being put into somebody else's system. Some of our money be uh, taken out of our system and put in somebody else's pocket. So I am fighting for uh, equal funding. I am fighting for our teachers, our staff members to uh, have their jobs. I am fighting to have these schools open for our kids. I am fighting for uh, 21st century learning in our schools. We cannot have uh, schools that are 20 and 30 years old that are not equipped for 21st century learning. So there's a lot of issues that are at hand, uh, but my, my main issues are school closing and fighting for our funds. Thank you, thank you. Antoinette Baskerville Richardson. Yes, uh, I think that uh, you might expect, and one might expect me to say that the major issue is local control, but local control is not the major issue. The major issue is how do we move our district forward? In order to move our district forward, we must have local control. In order to move our district forward, we must have a superintendent that the community has input into choosing. In order to move our district forward, we have to have the input of the community. And that's what we don't have with the superintendent. That's what we don't have with state control. And that's why we are not able to move our district forward. So it is all of these things, but the overriding question to me is, how do we move our district forward and provide all of the things that have been mentioned and that would be mentioned by any candidate? How do we do that? How do we keep that objective of moving forward by coming together as a community, demanding local control, 
demanding that we have a superintendent who is chosen by the community, and then there's some hard work because we all have to get together and we all have to work and bring our expertise and our experience to the table to design what we want education to look like for our children in Newark. Reginald. Thank you. I agree with Ms. Baskerville Richardson. Uh, the key issue now today is local control. We have to have local control of our school system. Right now, we have a superintendent that is not willing to cooperate with the community. She's not willing to attend public school board meetings, and that's a problem. Also, all of the other issues are connected in, in some way. Again, the universal enrollment, uh, the, uh, the NERC One plan, all of these plans are being created, but without the community's involvement. Again, as Ms. Baskin Richardson mentioned, the problem is we do not have a choice picking our superintendent. We have to have governance to, to govern our own affairs and determine the direction of our district going forward. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Donald Jackson. Okay, so I can kind of say yes and no to that question. Um, all right, is there one issue that we need to focus on? Yes and no. Um, you know, everyone's brought up a lot of valid uh, issues and about a lot of valid points. Um, one of the main issues that we uh, fight for, and I don't know if I speak for everyone, but I'm sure we can all agree, on <coughs> is um, equality in education, educational rights, and educational justice. Um, and with those issues, you have your school closings and a predominantly uh, poor neighborhood of African American and Latino children. And then you have your uh, funding funding taken away from this program, defunding that program, destabilizing special needs education, destabilizing um, ESL programs, you know, so you have all those issues in there. So um, there's not particularly one issue, no. Uh, so you, know, you don't really have your mind made up at that particular time, and you have to be open-minded, willing to work with the community, and uh, on those issues. Thank you, thank you. You know, since we began, we've been joined by uh, one of the Newark Trust board members that Chair of the External Affairs Committee, Irene Cooper Bosch, who is also the uh, who leads the Victoria Foundation in the great city of Newark. So welcome, Irene. Really pleasure here. I should also point out that um, this Mrs. Baskerville Richardson is an ex officio member of the board, as is the uh, president of the school board. That position itself holds that title, and we we want to acknowledge that as well. So. For our second question, we'll mix things up. If you don't mind, we'll start with you, Antoinette, and um, uh -oh. Uh -oh. and <laughs> and uh, and we'll we'll figure out if I can keep track of, of which way we're going from there. <laughs> so let's see how that works out. But the second question has to do with something all of the you have brought brought up already, and that's that according to a report by the National School Boards Association, great school board are committed to the following two things, having a strong relationship with the community and having a strong relationship with the superintendent. So how are you going to step up to the challenge given the current state of affairs in Newark? Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, it's a very interesting question because uh, there are a small number of people, I think, who uh, believe that as the president of the board, if I was simply kinder to the superintendent than perhaps she would come back to us to the meetings. Uh, but what has actually transpired is that, uh, and I speak specifically specifically to the superintendent not coming uh, to the board meetings, is that um, I believe, and I will say this quite honestly, that the superintendent stopped coming to the board meetings not because of me, <laughs> but because she is, does not want to face the community, the, the wrath from the community. Now, exactly what any school board uh, president could do to quell the wrath of the community, I would be quite, to be quite honest, I don't believe that the wrath of the community should be quelled. I think that the honest interest and the honest anger that people have over not being included in this process must be channeled into Newark residents being included in this process. I don't think it's too late. I think that the superintendent can put a halt, a stop to this whole North One plan, go back to the drawing board and include people. This is the third year of rolling out a plan without the inclusion of the North community. Anyone can make a mistake once after you have been told, advised, you should come back and the next time it should be better and the next time even better. But that's not what is happening. So 
So what I will say is that in terms of uh, the board itself, what has happened in the, on the uh, Newark Public Schools Board of Education, the board has actually come together. If anyone uh, watches the board meetings on television, even when the superintendent walked out of the meeting, the board came together, the board members carried on the business and continue to carry on the business of the board. The problem is not with the superintendent and the board, the problem is that the community is not getting their questions answered because the superintendent and is not there and is not allowing senior staff to be there. Thank you. So it occurs to me that, you know, if, you, if some of you are likely to be thinking, well, ditto, <laughs> or, and not feel like you need to take up the entire time, we can uh, just have more questions, but, but feel free to weigh in on this and, and we'll start with Donald. Um, I agree with that point uh, 100%, but we have to more so, uh, you know, and you touched on, on the issue. Um, unfortunately, superintendent is just not right for the city of Newark. You can't continue to ignore the community. You can't continue to disrespect board members. You can't continue to make up your own rules and think you're going to govern no public schools. Um, and unfortunately, the con community concerns will be the board's concerns. And the community and the board work hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And since the superintendent is not willing to work with that and not willing to be respectful of that, then unfortunately, it was nice knowing you, but you know, it's time for you to move on. And we as a community have the right to say that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Crystal Finesca. Finesca, yes. Um, I would like to say that um, I do agree with um, what Ms. Baskerville stated, but I do believe that there needs to be more community relationships. The success to education is everyone coming together. We need to get our elected officials involved, not only on a, the state level, but also on a local level in the city of Newark. There's a lot of representatives in this city. How about the board comes together and works with our elected officials in this city to get things moving forward? Um, the plan that's been happening hasn't been working. So if we have some new faces and some new voices, then maybe we can move forward by developing closer relationships, partnering up with the community, which is where I stand. I think community involvement plays a big role. And I also believe that partnering up not only with the children and the families, but also with every um, representative in the city, getting them involved, because I do believe that they're also on the same page of making sure that children are given the exact resources that they need in order to have a better education in all their schools. Nobody's good with the whole school clothing, so how about we partner up with our elected officials and get everyone involved? There's, there's, there's a special moment happening in Newark now where people are actually becoming involved. There was a time when that didn't happen as effectively as it's happening now. And I believe that the more community involvement, the more voices that speak up, the more changes will happen. So I believe that that's gonna be really crucial in this time. And that's something that I, I feel like I can bring to the table, um, becoming a Newark School Board member. Reginald? Thank you. Uh, I believe uh, what's going on now is you have to work, you have to be willing to work with someone. You can't work with an individual that's not willing to work with you. That's simple. Uh, right now, I, I see the clear direction that the board is going in, and I believe that that is the right direction to continue in. It is the community's voice that needs to be heard. Right now, what we have is a superintendent that's not willing to work with, with anyone. Uh, she refuses to attend uh, state legislative meetings. So we honestly have an individual who's sitting in uh, Two Cedar Street who's not willing to work with our legislators, who's not willing to work with our board members, our community, our stakeholders. So, as Mr. Jackson touched on it, she needs to go because she's not willing to work with this community. We have to have a superintendent that's open to dialogue, that's open to criticism. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, honest, it's an honest discussion. And that is what we need as a superintendent. Thank you. Ron, you want to add anything to that? Um, I believe that we need to have a superintendent that, um, that comes to the table, that meets with our community, that meets with our parents, that meets with our students, uh, that meets with all stakeholders that are at hand. Um, you know, our, currently our superintendent, like the many uh, panelists stated, doesn't come to any board, me board meetings. How do you conduct business if you don't come to uh, a, bit, a, a, board me a board meeting? Secondly, as a board member, um, I will try my best if I'm elected on Wednesday, April 23rd, to try to work with the superintendent as best as I can. Uh, but the but the thing about it is, we all have to get on <coughs> one accord. We need we all need to get on one page. We all need to get on one level and say, listen, this is what is at stake. Our children, 
It is not about us. It is not about our paychecks. It is not about our families. It is simply about one thing. It's about 38,000 children in North Public Schools that this fight is being, being fought about. And that's what a lot of people have to understand. It is not about the superintendent. It is not about us. It is about our students. But the reason why it has turned into the superintendent is because she walked out of meetings. She refused to meet with people. But that's not what we need to be focused on. What we need to be focused on are getting our children adequate textbooks to learn. We need to get our children adequate funding to get to get um, um, technology. To, 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 to get them to learn. And that's basically what this fight is about. And Philip. Uh, yes, as a board member, I, I came on three months ago, and when I came on and got sworn in, she left the uh, meeting and she never came back, so I thought it was me. But, <laughs> but I just wanna say, um, now that I got to know that she never came back, it's a shame, because there's a lot of things that, you know, as a, uh, um, a teamster for 35 years also, I've seen a lot of operations go down the tubes, like this is happening, by her trying to lay off teachers, by, by the whole um, the contract, the budget that they put out two weeks ago that our board members, we voted it down. But um, she, it's, it, to me, it's a, a, a strong case to me of union busting. That's what I really think that it is. And I, um, I disagree with that. And, and you can't build a, a good relationship with somebody that don't want to work with you. Thank you, thank you. So uh, we're gonna, let's just go for it. We have, there's about 12,000 fewer students in Newark, right, Newark Public School District, than five years ago. Um, the number of Newark, or public school students in Newark is roughly 45,000. Right now there's roughly, roughly 35,000 in a Newark public schools. You know, if, if the average district in New Jersey, say 5,000 students, uh, or, or average school is about 500 students, let's say, just for that sake, you're still talking 10, 12 schools, you know, that you have on the books that I'm not sure what happens to those schools. So I get it, no, no more you know, decreases in funding, but there are some really big issues you got, you're all facing, right, as a community. How are you prepared to deal with some of these chronic big issues that <clears throat> numbers don't lie, you know, there's only so many ways to cut the pie. How do, you, how do you get what students need and still address the complex challenges that we're all facing? And I'm, I'm gonna let you all decide who wants to jump in first, because that's a big question. It looks like Donald's ready for it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and I, and I hate to say this, but we have to be honest. And I mean, the Board of Education has to be honest. I know you say numbers don't lie, but that budget, and I think I'm in agreement with everyone that saw that budget um, that was presented last week, uh, you know, not only did the numbers not really tell the truth, but they didn't say too much anything. They just said, this is what we have, and this is what we're gonna do. They didn't explain, you know, a per line spendage, uh, where's the issues, uh, you know, they, they, they somewhat said where they were going to cut, but they didn't specify. Uh, they said they were going to cut central office budget. They didn't say, you know, what's, whether it was essential, not essential, that sort of thing. Um, you know, at the end of the day, that's what we have to do. We have to be honest. And as a board member, I'm willing to fight for the um, actual numbers, for the truth. We need to find out what's going on, what contracts we have with who, how much the superintendent is getting paid, how much uh, money we're spending on consulting, how much money we're spending out on uh, private contracts, that sort of thing. We have to be honest and open. So, before we um, deal with the issues, we got to know what we're really looking at. Um, I think we are now um, in terms of understanding what's going on. We do understand that we uh, have a budget deficit. We do understand that we uh, have a shortfall with enrollment. Unfortunately, what's not uh, implemented in that uh, uh, enrollment is that the fact that these um, students go out to other schools and unfortunately <coughs> come back to the district, and they're not formulated in the budget. And believe it or not, that number is high. Mm -hmm. the, the return of the school, the uh, board of education is back. And uh, we're not talking about those numbers. So we have to be honest with numbers before we can even uh, start to tackle this issue because you know you can't work on something you don't know that you have. Right. Thank you. Anyone? The floor is yours. You know, we have some big issues facing the district. Uh, putting the budget piece aside for a moment, if we just focus on the fact that that let's say state funding 
remains roughly the same or even ticks up a little tiny bit this year from what I understand. But yet the per pupil cost overall goes down because there are fewer students. How do you, how do you deal with that? Well, if you don't mind, may go, I go ahead, back please. and answer sure. the, the yeah, go ahead. question that you asked please. before. Okay, so um, I just want to talk first of all about who creates the perception that uh, who, who's, whose data are we using, okay? Numbers don't lie, but it depends on whose numbers you are using, uh, what the result is and what you end up uh, looking at. Another issue is that, uh, and let me say first of all, I don't see this as a charter versus traditional public school issue. I don't think that uh, people should, that parents and children should have to compete at all. However, that's the situation that we have been put in. And the charter schools are able to secure funding to do very aggressive uh, campaigning and very aggressive recruitment, which public schools do not get to tell their story. Every, the traditional public schools do not. Uh, every parent wants an environment that is safe uh, with younger children, a small, safe environment. And so that is understandable. When we talk about underutilization in the traditional schools, underutilization can be created. When you take science and art and you move them out of dedicated classrooms and you put science on a cart and you put art on a cart, then you create underutilization. So some of those numbers are created. Even when we look at our test scores, and you know, I've gone back over the years. You know, I was a teacher in the district for many years. I'm looking at uh, the years of 2007, and I'm looking, and I've, I'll show anyone copies. I'm looking at a longitudinal comparison uh, of Newark students uh, versus Abbott State and affluent uh, districts. And I mean, you can't see it all now, but I mean, if we look at it, in the early uh, 2000s, moving on up, the scores were going up gradually and consistently as they should. So all of this whole, you know, one Newark plan and all of these changes, these things aren't even necessary to improve our schools. This is something that has been imposed upon us, and this is the whole problem. That one Newark plan, that's one way. We never discuss other ways. There are other ways to achieve the same thing that don't close our schools, that don't disrupt our neighborhoods. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, just a uh, point of process, <laughs> the trust would be happy to take that document sure. and post it on our website and attribute it to uh, whoever produced it. And the the North uh, Public Schools. Yeah, we'll be yes, happy to do that. Okay. Make sure that we have it before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Kristen. I just wanted to address the issue about um, the budget. There's no true transparency with the budget. They're giving us an overall budget, but they're not giving us a line by line budget. And that's very important. Transparency is everything. When you can line out exactly where all the resources are going, then that gives everyone a clear understanding of what we're doing with the money. Um, I believe that they need to do that annually, not just give us an overall budget whenever they feel like it with the way that they're creating it, but they need to give us line by line items. And I believe that most importantly, we can't say, you know, numbers don't lie, but they lie when we're just getting a, a it's like a, a rounded number, and this is what we're doing with this, but where are the resources actually going? Are we taking the resources and putting them into the schools that need modern, they need modern advances, they need more computers, they need, act, they need better textbooks. We need to make sure that the money is not going just into the top people, the administrators, but actually going into the schools themselves. So I believe that transparency is the key when we talk about the budget. Um, so that's something that I will definitely be pushing if I become a school board member on April 23rd, transparency. Um, numbers don't lie when the numbers are actually true and they're clear and black and white. So um, I think that that's something that we really need to focus on in order to get the right resources in the right places. Thank you. Philip? Yeah, they, um, we have to get back to uh, letting the teachers teach. Let them do what they do. Let them work with the kids, the children like they used to. Get out there, have after school programs. You know, this budget was, was ridiculous. I mean, uh, like I said, the board voted it down and, and that's, what, that's what it needed. We have to all get together like we, did, like we do with the community, the school board, like going back. I mean, we have to reach out to everybody so every child gets a, a, a fair education. So every teacher works with every child the right way, not just testing and testing and testing. There's more to that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I believe to get um, our funding for per pupil, 
uh, back to where it needs to be is to cut out where it needs to be cut at. Right now, we have staff members um, that are sitting at to Cedar Street that are making well over the above salary rate. I believe if we have a salary rate cut uh, and put back into the district, I believe we can increase our uh, per pupil spending. I believe that we can increase our um, schools with the proper uh, technology and equipment that we need <coughs> for our schools. I believe if staff members take a pay cut, I believe that we won't be in a $42.2 million deficit. Um, we have to look at numbers don't lie. When you have staff members that are just coming into the district that are having positions over positions over positions that are giving bonuses that are not only uh, doing one person's job but another person's job that's getting paid. So we all have to look at where the money is going. So I believe if we have our staff members at Two Cedar Street take a pay cut, um, I believe that's where we can get our funding back on the right track. Thank you. And Reginald? Thank you, Bill, for the last word here. Well, what's going on now is we have a superintendent, and I, I don't want to dwell on her as much, but when you have a, a fiscal problem that you created, when you're laying off one-third of the teachers, when you're slating to shut down one-third of the school, you're creating this fiscal problem. Also, uh, as Ms. Baskerville Richardson touched on it briefly, uh, we're, this should never be about a public school versus charter school thing. Mm -hmm. It's a community school. <clears throat> right now, what we have, uh, charter schools have access to certain funds, foundation funding, you have access to uh, donors who are willing to donate money to your, uh, your cause. So they have an aggressive approach where they have access to uh, funding uh, to improve their buildings. Right now, when, when you're taking funding from the educational programs from traditional schools, when you're not fixing, fixing up the building, of course you're gonna have a, a flea of uh, parents pulling away from those conditions. But when you, you're, you don't have the cooperation of the governor and, and members on the state level to help improve these conditions, then of course you're gonna uh, have a lack of cooperation and funding fleeing going other, other places. So I believe that she created this uh, fiscal problem, and right now we have to address it and deal with it uh, with the community. Thank you. We're going to get to the audience in just a moment. We're going to do another round of questions. Uh, let's, let's focus on the actual process of being a board member, right? And it looks to me like, Reginald, you have a, a BL, I think you'd be one of the first, I don't know who else is on the board, but let's say you got elected, we're taking a vote, <coughs> and we do this in alphabetical order, am I right? Yes. So, all of a sudden, a big issue is going to come up, and you're going to have, you're going to look left, you're going to look right. Do you are you willing to sort of a two part question a uh, be your own person, make your own decisions, you know, issue by issue, and b if it's not something that you voted uh, for, are you willing to publicly support the vote of the board? Well, I, I am an independent. I have my own mind. Uh, being educated taught me to think uh, for myself. Uh, when voting on issues, I, I would not have a problem discussing it with my colleagues first and actually understanding the issue. Um, you, you just have to review the material, read and do the work of the board, attend committee meetings, stay in constant communication with the administration, and also work collaboratively with uh, your board members. Um, and if there's a decision that the board make, of course I will publicly uh, support the decision of the board if it's the right decision. If it's a wrong decision, no, I will not support it. And, uh, and, and as long as it has the community's best interest in heart, I will wholeheartedly support the decision of the board. But as long as it has the community of the, the residents, the parents, and the families of the city in, in, the, in the best interest, of course I will support it and be my own independent. So remember, two-part question, right? Uh, if you're thinking independently, voting by issue, uh, and then secondly, if you disagree with the decision of the board, are you willing to support it publicly? Who, who would like to jump in now? Philip? Uh, yes, as a board member, uh, we already, uh, if we, we talk about everything and then sometimes we don't all agree with it. Like in the last vote, we had a budget, we had a few board members that said yes, and we had some that said no. To no one, but it's going to happen, and you got to be—you got to be your own man out there. If you feel like that's the right thing to do, 
then you vote that way. You feel like it's the right thing for the people of Newark. They're the ones that elected you. That's the right thing to do. But it happens, it's on a board. You talk about everything and every person has their own vote. Thank you. Uh, well, let's go uh, Donald first and then to you. Okay. Um, so, you know, agreed 100%. Um, I'm just gonna talk about me a little bit <coughs> and then answer this question. Um, my, my family has been devoted to public service and um, all my life I grew up around people, helping people and uh, doing what they uh, felt, maybe you could say spiritually, but felt what was good at heart. Um, and uh, with that being said, I will, one, as one candidate said, review the materials. You gotta know what you're talking about. Um, you need to know what the issues are. You need to know what's, you know, what you're gonna be prepared for at that vote. Um, you need to also work collaboratively with the community. And if the community says no to a certain issue, I have to support my community. The people who supported me in not only running, but helped me get on the board and continue to support me as a board member and even if I'm not a board. The community shows me uh, support 100%, so <coughs> I will have to vote for what the community at large says. Democracy, where majority rules. If it's in the best interest of the community and majority says it's the best interest, then we have to vote with that. And um, to that point about being an independent uh, thinker, definitely so. Yes. And if the board makes a decision you don't agree with publicly, are you? Well, uh, I would say no. And the reason why I would say no is because if it's not at the best interest of the community, I can't support it. That's what we heard from. Okay, so um, I think that um, one thing that I learned uh, on the board is the difference between being a board member and a member of a board. And what I learned is that a board member uh, basically goes for themselves, wants to um, simply make decisions based on how they personally feel. And a member of a board communicates with the other board members, communicates uh, with the community, and as much as possible, tries to encourage the board members to act as a whole whenever possible. So, uh, and I think we've basically very much achieved that on our board. However, there are also times when there are uh, questions of conscience, when a person simply does not agree, has philosophical or political or whatever disagreements that are very important to them, and those are, of course, the times when um, anyone would, and I would hope, be encouraged to uh, vote in the direction uh, that they believe is correct. So I think it's two-sided. One is, of course, to always be an individual, not do anything that um, you uh, disagree with. If you can't get up and look at yourself in the mirror the next day, then don't do it. But at the same time, whenever the board acts as a whole, then the board is strong. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. you want to go? Okay. Um, for, I want to add to the first part, I am definitely an independent thinker. Um, growing, in a, growing up in a household full of a bunch of kids, um, I always know how to speak my own mind, so I'm definitely an independent thinker. But I do believe in working together. My whole platform is partnering up with the community, the board, and everyone else in the city that wants the same thing for the school system. So I'm a big believer in working with everyone hands in hands. Um, I think that's the only way that things will work. You can't make decisions on your own. It's a, it's a, it's a team effort. So um, to answer the second question, I do believe that I will work with the board to make the best decisions. I will not publicly agree with something that I don't feel right about in my heart because I believe that becoming a school board member is doing what's best for the community. Um, I'm not doing this for my own agenda. I'm doing it for what's best for the children in the city of Newark, and that means partnering up with parents and teachers and everyone involved in the community, making the correct decision for the community. So um, if something is right, I will definitely stand up and say yes. And if something is wrong and everyone else agrees with it, I will not agree with that if I don't feel right in my heart. Um, so, but I do believe in working together. I believe that when there's more than one person involved, when there's two or more, things will go the right way because we're doing it together. So I will do everything that I can. I will work tirelessly with the other board members to make sure that we make the best decision for our community. This is an elected position, and that means that we need to be the voice of the community. That's what we're here for, and that's what I stand for. Thank you. As a uh, little boy growing up, I have always been an independent person. Um, I can remember in my household where I started being independent at the age of 13. So as a board member, um, and even um, as me growing into this adult life, I am an independent person. 
Uh, so as a board member, I am an independent person. I will think independently. Um, you know, I am for what New York is for. Um, for if, if our parents are for uh, more after school programs, then that's what I'm going to be for. If our parents and students and, and community are more of, of, for, of, of pushing for community um, resource centers, then I'm going to push for that. I'm going to vote for that. Um, as working a part as the board, um, agree with all candidates that stated you have to read the material, number one. And number two, if a, if a vote comes up that uh, the board is um, voting on, I will vote with my conscience. I will vote with the uh, elected people that voted for me, that supported me. Um, and I will vote in the best interest that will save our education for our children. Anyone else? Did everyone have a chance to respond? We're, we're turning now to our studio audience, so to speak. And uh, I have questions here. You feel free to, to uh, write some more down. Looks like we'll be able to get to quite a few of them. We'll keep it crisp and moving forward uh, uh, quickly. So this quest, first question right off the top. What's the process you're going to use to repair the schools that are in need of repair? Uh, and name a couple of ways in which and which organizations are you going to contact to investigate? Now I'm going to interpret that. Like, who's going to do this analysis of, of the repairs of, of the schools? How are we going to get that done? And uh, again, if I can keep track, you know, and I think I'm doing I'm doing okay so far. Let's start with whoever would like to jump in, and, and everyone has an opportunity to respond. Um, as a board member, um, what I plan what I plan to do is to sit down with our uh, facilities uh, director to go over every uh, building that we have, uh, to look at every contract that we have, to look at what schools need to be repaired, uh, to look at what funds we have to repair our schools, and look at what funds we need to repair our schools. Uh, we have schools that are 20 and 30 years old uh, that, in, that is in dire need of repairs. Um, you know, we have a, a school that, you know, needs technology. Well, guess what? We have the money, we have the funds, we get the technology for the schools. We need schools that um, have uh, plumbing issues. We get the money, we go there, and we fix the schools. So I am um, I I'm willing to uh, spend countless hours and days, uh, even months, to go with our facilities director, not only to sit in our office to look at our contracts, but to go out and to visit the schools. Because that's what we need to do. We need to go out and visit the schools to see what really needs repairs instead of just listening to people tell us what needs repairs. We need to go out and see what needs repairs. If I tell you, oh, well, I need a toilet to be repaired, when in actuality I need light bulbs to be put in my school, that's what I'm going to go out there and put. I'm going to put light bulbs instead of a toilet. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Don, you had something. Sure. So the question was, you know, lots of our schools. So let me just, I want to get it right. What process will you use to repair the schools that are in need of repair? And name a couple of organizations that you're going to contact okay. to help investigate and get that done. Okay. Uh, well, for one, um, let's not pretend uh, most of our schools were built in the early 1900s. Um, <laughs> Their extensions were built in the mid-1900s, so most of our schools are definitely outdated. The power sources are outdated, the roofs are outdated, the, 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 the technology, the, the, the overall buildings are just outdated. So um, we already know uh, what schools need to be targeted. We also have uh, key organizations, and you know, I'm, I'm hitting my own self in the head because I can't name an organization that, uh, that, uh, that we went to Trenton with who uh, investigated these. And uh, in fact, we had a rally uh, a couple months ago, I think Ms. Matthew can attest this as well, out in front of Barrington High School. And they actually walked through and saw the dilapidated uh, condition of the school. Um, so, you know, just with grassroots organizations, also talking with parents and students, kids are going to let you know what's wrong with their school book. Um, as a matter of fact, as a student at Malcolm H. Bass High School, I made a point to go to the board meeting and take uh, samples that fell off the wall at my school building, take them to the board and show them this is what we were dealing with. So, the, you know, just talking with people find out what's going on is uh, one of the ways to do that. And also, as another candidate just stated, uh, working with the uh, building operators, the uh, chief operators of the, uh, the uh, maintenance and building departments, and finding out you know, uh, how do we do this, 
how we do that now. So secure funding wise, um, we Norfolk School were promised new schools. In fact, uh, Western High School uh, secured land behind it to build the new school, and it, we still, ten years later, don't have a new school. So we need to also uh, hire, uh, not hire, but uh, have lawyers look into uh, legally what uh, actually can be taken. Yes. Yes. Um, there's already. I'm a little bit familiar with the program already in place called the North Long Term Facilities Plan, and um, I just believe it's not being implemented correctly. So I would work tirelessly to make sure that we're actually implementing what's already stated within that um, plan, because um, we already know the issues that are going on in the schools. We already see what's going on, and I think that we need to do with that plan. What we need to do is make a list of what is priority. Some schools may have bigger issues than others, and I think that we need to make a priority list the same way we would do in our personal lives and start addressing them one by one instead of just making the list and let it sit aside. We need to definitely um, work on that plan and make people accountable. All the, the maintenance managers, we need to make them accountable, giving them the resources that they need so that they, they can um, fix the problem in the schools, whether it's a light bulb, whether it's getting a new computer, whether it's a door, anything, anything that the schools need. And as far as getting connected with um, what resources would I use? I would use every resource that becomes available. It's all about research. I believe in reaching out to the private sector. People want to help. You know, there's people that want to help. I just believe that we need to be the advocates in making our voice heard and going to the private sector, going to nonprofit organizations, and allowing them to give us more resources, being that they want to cut our budget so much, then we need to go and look for every resource available to make sure that we can implement this plan to its full, um, you know, to, to the best that it is, and um, make sure that we address things as needed we need a list we need to start addressing it and not just put this list aside and make this program work because when the school when the schools look better kids feel more comfortable so I think that that's really important yes, well the uh, the condition the physical conditions of our schools and yes they are many of them a hundred years old that lies directly in the lap of the governor it is the governor that controls those monies it is the governor who actually decided not to fully fund North facilities. In addition to that, it is the governor who took federal grant money, made it available to charter schools, and did not make that same money available to public schools for facilities, and he could have done that. That money could have been divided. It did not all have to go to charter schools. That's why I say that this whole divide between charter and public is contrived, it is inflicted upon us. It doesn't have to be this way. It's the way that they decide uh, to allot the money. The School Development Authority, that is the authority in Trenton that oversees anything to do with facilities. We will continue to put pressure uh, on them. These decisions are also voted on uh, by the State Board of Education. The Long Range Facilities Plan, the district just finished the Long Range Facilities Plan that they are supposed to have submitted, that they will be submitting soon, but guess what? The superintendent took district money and did a separate facilities plan, and it is that separate facilities plan that she used in order to justify the one Newark plan. So being uh, on the Newark Board of Education, unfortunately, you can't just do the things you think that you would be doing. You also have to be a detective. Yes, sir. Well, as Ms. Baskerville were just saying, so eloquently said, we have to keep the pressure on the governor. Uh, right now, he is the, the control, he is the certified uh, revenue uh, officer in the state. Uh, what that means is that he has he have control over the School Development Authority, SDA, uh, which is responsible. Each taxpayer in this town pay additional funds to specifically pay for uh, facility improvements. So again, to keep the pressure on our governor uh, to adequately fund our public schools. Also, uh, we have a numerous of uh, uh, corporate communities here in the city of Newark. I know, for an example, uh, Home Depot uh, worked with historically black colleges in this country to help build up the facility infrastructure on those campuses. So we can work with uh, Home Depot uh, co as a member, um, co collaborate with the corporate community uh, to invest in our neighborhood schools. Also, as a member on the Board of Trustees at Montclair State University, I sit on the Academics and Facilities Committee. We work with uh, Panic Side to create a six-story uh, com uh, campus dormitory. So again, working collaborating, collaboratively with our corporate community, keep the pressure on our governor to disperse the funds through the School Development Authority are ways that we can improve the outdated uh, facilities that we have in our public schools. 
So those, that's the direction I'd like to go in. Thank you. So we, we have to take a, a very brief break, technology break, to switch out the tapes for our second half. If anyone didn't have, uh, if they still want to weigh in on that question, we could do so. When we